Hey everybody, this is Emily from Life Enrichment, and I am here today to do another Broadway class with you all. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoy. Today's Broadway musical is going to be The Phantom of the Opera. So hopefully some of you had the chance to see the version that we showed uh, this past Saturday. Uh, it was the 25th anniversary, and we're going to see a couple clips of it in my presentation as well. Uh, and uh, the picture that you see here is actually from that cast. Uh, that's Sierra Bogus as Christine and Ramin Karimlu as the Phantom. All right, so let's get started. The Phantom of the Opera. So I'm sure many of you know the music from the Phantom of the Opera is from... The, the legend himself, uh, Mr. Andrew Lloyd Webber, or Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. Uh, the lyrics were by Charles Hart, and the book was written by Andrew Lloyd Webber, as well as Richard Stilgo. Something that I wasn't, didn't really know much about was that it was based on the French novel by Gaston Leroux. Uh, I had known it was uh, a book at some point, but I didn't know the author's name uh, until I started putting this presentation together, but that's an interesting uh, factoid. Uh, the original production of The Phantom of the Opera was at the West End in London in 1986. So in case you didn't know, Andrew Lloyd Webber, he is uh, an English uh, composer. Uh, so that's where the musical originally opened and it premiered on Broadway in 1988 at the Majestic Theater, and it is still there today. The film version was released in 2004. It starred Emmy Rossum, who uh, some of you may know from the te television show Shameless with William H. Macy, and it also starred Gerard Butler, the uh, famous movie actor. It is uh, widely regarded uh, and it is best known for being the longest running Broadway show of all time, as well as the second longest running West End musical. The first, longing, the first longest running West End musical is actually Les Miserables. Uh, on Broadway, it has 13,370 performances to date. So obviously, uh, this number hasn't been going up recently, uh, but as of March of 2020, which is when, you know, Broadway... Uh, decided to shut down for a short time. Uh, that's how many performances it's had on Broadway. So uh, highly successful and as we can see here the bottom bullet it has been produced in over 28 countries on six continents. So that is definitely a widely produced film, uh, greatly loved and very beloved. So let's get into the plot now. All right, Phantom of the Opera, the plot. Let's start with Act One. So the musical takes place in the, in the year 1988 uh, at the Paris Opera House. Uh, we see an opera troupe. They're rehearsing for their sold out performance of a musical called Hannibal. Uh, but there's a lot of suspicious behavior going on. A lot of um, things in the theater are falling and uh, there's the, one, the main actress in their musical. Uh, they call it their prima donna. Her name is Carlotta and she quits at the beginning of the musical. She says that she doesn't wanna, this stuff has been going on for years now. She, you know, she's frightened and she doesn't wanna be there anymore. Uh, so she decides to quit. And she says that the cause of it all is the phantom, that he's the, he's the one that's been causing all the, all the suspicious things that have been going on. Uh, the ballet, uh, the lead, the ballet teacher there, her name is Madame Geary, and she suggests to the two owners of the opera house, their names are Thierman and Andre, she suggests that they audition uh, a woman named Christine. She's young, she's very talented, and she knows that she's been, um, she's been very well trained. Uh, Christine is an orphan, her father was a, a famous violinist, and uh, she knows that she's very well trained, so she gets them, gets them to audition her, and uh, when she does her audition song, this young man named Raul uh, notices her quickly and he recognizes that it's an old childhood friend of his. And he's a nobleman at this point, so he has um, a lot of influence and a lot of power over, um, over the events that uh, occur at the opera house. So 
uh, after she she gets the role, she's very, very, very talented. She gets the role, and after her triumphant debut at, as uh, the lead role in Hannibal, uh, she goes to her dressing room and she talks to her friend, and then Raul comes and visits her, and she confesses to them both uh, that she was taught how to do how to sing well from the angel of music, who's this mysterious figure that's been that's been appearing to her. Uh, she says that he's been haunting her dreams, and she thinks that he resembles a character from stories that her father once told her and Raul. So Raul is kind of skeptical about about those events, um, but he, you know, he just wants to support her, and he decides that he's going to ask her out on a date. Uh, he so he asks her to dinner, and he leaves. Um, he leaves to go get his hat so they can go out to dinner, and the Phantom. Uh, is actually nearby and he overhears uh, their um, their conversation and he uh, appears to Christine starts talking to her and gets her to follow him down to his lair which is uh, underneath the opera house so they go underneath the opera house and then they have to take this boat through this subterranean lake and uh, he leads her to his lair uh, Christine faints because you know she's frightened she's shocked she doesn't really know what's going on and when she awakes she finds the phantom and she decides to lift his mask uh, she she reveals uh, his grotesque face uh, it's uh, deformed and she starts to run in fear until he starts to express that he really just wants to be loved you know he's looked like this his whole life and you know he's He's seeking out uh, some some empathy, some sympathy from her. So she she you know she feels some pity for him. So she returns the mask, and in in exchange, he he brings her back to the opera house. And that's about halfway through Act One. Uh, so I'll go, I'm going to show you a couple clips here. This first one um, is a song called "Think of Me," and this is the um, this is the song that Christine auditions for auditions with when she gets the lead role in their in their opera. Oh, hold on. Think of me. Thank you. 
She's very talented. She's been in quite a number of Broadway shows. Uh, and Andrew Lloyd Webber actually considers her the best Christine that's ever been. He considers her the absolute best. And uh, for, honestly, I, I don't really blame him. I think she's really fantastic. Uh, we're going to see a little bit more of her throughout this just because most of the footage that's out there is from the 25th anniversary production. Uh, and it's just a very, it's a very good cast. Uh, the next song I'll show you is The Phantom of the Opera, the title song, and this is uh, the Phantom and Christine singing together uh, when he brings her to his lair.
was, uh, again, that was the 25th anniversary cast, but that was actually a production they did at the Brit Awards in 2012. Again, that's Sierra Bogus and Ramin Karimlu. He's another very well-respected uh, Broadway actor. Uh, I actually was fortunate to have gotten to see him when he was in Les Miserables as uh, Jean Valjean uh, a couple years ago. It was very good. Um, so we're going to move on with Act 1 now. Uh, so a considerable amount of time later, we, we uh, see the, the character Joseph Bouquet. He's a stagehand at the theater. And he's telling uh, stories of the Phantom and his magical lasso. Uh, he's telling the story to the chorus girls uh, that work there at the Opera House uh, until Madame Geary hears him. And she warns him that he should stay silent or face the Phantom's wrath, that he's a, a very vengeful person and he doesn't like you know, when, to hear that people are you know, talking about him. Uh, shortly after that, uh, we see the character of Raoul again. He, has received a note warning him not to see Christine again, and he assumes that it's from the owners of the theater, Fermin and Andre. Uh, so he goes to confront them about it, and he learns at the same time that Carlotta has also received a note saying that her days at the opera are numbered. Uh, Carlotta again was the former prima donna that had the role, uh, the lead role in that in the music in the opera before Christine had taken that role. Uh, the owners receive a note as well that instruct them to replace Carlotta with Christine in the new opera, Il Muto. Uh, and also, they, he wants them to reserve a box seat for him to come see the performance, or else they will face disaster beyond imagination. Uh, they, dismiss, they dismiss all these warnings and they place Carlotta in the lead role while placing Christine in the role of a, of a mute. So she doesn't have any lines in the musical. Uh, the musical seems to be going well, Il Muto, uh, until we hear the, the voice of the Phantom and he's, he expresses that he's angry that they didn't leave the box seat open for him. Uh, so after that, we hear Christine, she, she recognizes that he's near and she whispers, you know, kind of just to herself, it, it almost seems um, unwilling. She whispers that he's near and when Carlotta hears her, she tells her to remain silent, because again, her role in the musical is silent, uh, and she calls her a little toad. And when the Phantom hears that, he retaliates by turning her voice into a frog-like croak. So when Carlotta goes to speak or sing, her voice comes out in a croak. Uh, so when that happens, uh, Fermin, he, you know, he, you know, he's panicking that this stuff is going on. So he announces that Christine is going to take over the starring role. And after he makes that decision, we see uh, Joseph Bouquet, the aforementioned stagehand, his body drops from the ceiling and he's been hung by the lasso uh, that he was talking about, the magical lasso that the Phantom possesses. Um, so, you know, a lot of chaos ensues both in the audience and amongst the, the cast. Uh, so while all this is going on, Christine has Raoul follow her to the roof. She walks all the way up the stairs, up into the roof of the opera house, and she tells him about the phantom and the lair that she had, uh, tr that she had been to with him. And, you know, um, he believes her, and he vows that he's going to protect her and love her, and she makes the same vow to him, um, because, you know, they, they're frightened about all the events that have transpired so far. Uh, so they make that vow to each other, but what they don't know is that the Phantom is overhearing. And he, uh, he, he vows revenge on them because he loves Christine. Uh, he doesn't want her with Raoul. He's taught her, you know, how to be a good uh, singer, and he thinks that, that, I mean, she owes him her, her love. Uh, so after he vows his revenge, uh, the big ending to Act 1 is he crashes the chandelier uh, the very uh, gorgeous centerpiece of the theater onto the stage, making a big scene, and that's that's how Act One ends. So the the next couple clips I'm going to show you are um, the first one I'm going to show you is from the movie, uh, the 2004 film with Emmy Rossum and uh, Patrick Wilson. He's he's more known for he's done a quite a amount of uh, scary scary movie roles. Again, he's a movie actor as well. And uh, this is them in the movie, she and Raoul. Why have you, uh, why have you followed me here? Or why have you brought me here, I'm sorry. And that's the first clip I'm gonna show you. 
Why have you brought me here? I must return. I kill you. His eyes will find us there. Of you don't say that. Those eyes that burn. Don't even think. He has to kill a thousand men. Forget this waking nightmare. The phantom of the opera. This phantom is uncable and defeated. I guess no phantom of the opera. My God, who is this man? My God, who is this man? Who has to kill? This mask of death. I can't escape from here. Who sees this voice you hear? Christine's attraction to him. She's very drawn to the phantom. Uh, she's drawn to his voice. She's drawn to the pain that she, she sees in his eyes. And she can't quite explain why she's so drawn to him, uh, but it kind of frightens her. It makes, for, it makes it hard for her to, you know, just, just abandon him and everything that he's taught her. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so this next clip I'm going to show you is All I Ask of You. It's the final, uh, the real, like, final big number from act one and this is the vow that christine and rot will make to each other uh they vow to you know love and protect each other and the phantom overhears this song these uh this clip that you're going to see is a production a version that they did at the royal albert hall and it's actually the original uh broadway um actors so we have sarah brightman as christine and michael crawford as the phantom Let daylight 
dry your tears I'm here with you beside you To guard you and to guide you months later and there's a big masquerade ball at the opera house uh, the phantom appears while they're celebrating the masquerade and he announces that he's written a new musical called Don Juan triumphant and he wants Christine to play the star role uh, he approaches Christine and he sees that she has an engagement ring around her neck which he snatches before disappearing uh, Raul 
demands from Madame Geary that she share the phantom story since she's been around the opera house a long time. And she confesses to him uh, that, that the phantom is actually a brilliant scholar, a magician, an inventor, an architect, and a composer. And because of his disfigurement, he's been ostracized from society his whole life, and he was even displayed in a cage at one point, uh, almost as part of a circus act, before he escaped to live below ground, below the opera house, where he's lived for quite a few years now. Now, Raoul plots to use the opera's premiere, this opera that he's written, Don Juan Triumphant, as a way to trap the phantom. Uh, but Christine refuses to participate. You know, she still has some empathy, some sympathy, and probably a lot of pity for the Phantom. So she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to go along with that idea. Uh, but again, she will still star in the musical. Uh, while they're doing rehearsals, we see the male lead, his name's Piangi, which is um, a term that's used uh, in opera as a kind of a stock character. Uh, he's struggling with his role. He can't really get his lines right or the notes right. Uh, but then suddenly the piano becomes possessed. It starts playing on its own. And after it starts to play, the chorus just magically starts singing together in perfect unison. Um, again, it's, it's pretty much magic uh, that we see this happen. And we know that we know as audience members that it's, part, it's because of the phantom. Uh, we then see uh, Christine. And she, again, she's feeling torn about her feelings. She, she, you know, she loves Raul and she, she doesn't doubt that relationship at all, but she doesn't understand why she's so drawn to the Phantom. She doesn't know what she should do, uh, but he's, you know, he's taught her a lot. He's made her the, the artist that she is. Uh, and she, she's really just looking for some guidance right now. So she goes to her father's grave and she sings a song there uh, called Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again. Uh, and she's, you know, expressing her desire for some guidance to figure out what she should do. Uh, after we see her sing this song, the phantom appears atop the mausoleum there at the, at the cemetery. And he, you know, he starts drawing Christine in. He claims himself as the angel of music. And, you know, that's her, that's her, her weakness for him. Uh, she starts to kind of succumb under his, under his spell, really, until Raoul arrives. Ra when Raoul arrives, the phantom kind of taunts him and starts to throw fireballs at him. Uh, so Ra Raoul and Christine, they escape together, and the phantom, he pledges war against them both, and he causes the mausoleum to burst into flames. Quite a big, quite a big scene. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show you some more clips now. Uh, this clip I'm going to show you first is from the 2004 film, and this is the masquerade scene. I really like the, the movie version of it. Uh, the costumes are just beautiful, and uh, just the scope of this, the scope that you can get with with a, a movie that you can't get for, um, that you can't get with a, a live performance is really, really well orchestrated. <laughs> Good. Had you missed me, good messieurs, 
I have written you an opera. Here I bring the finished score. Don Juan triumphant. Fondest greetings to you all. A few instructions just before the so starts. Carlotta must be taught to act, not a normal trick of strutting around the stage. Our Don Juan must lose some weight. It's not healthy in a man of Pianchi's age. And my managers must learn that their place is in an office, not the arts. As for our star, Miss Christine Dye, no doubt she'll do her best. It's true, her voice is good. She knows, no. Should she wish to excel, she has much still to learn. If pride will let her return to me, her teacher, her teacher. Your chains are the mine, you belong to me. All right, so we see there he's written his new musical. He wants Christine to be the star, but he kind of questions Pianji's ability to, to play the Don Juan, uh, the, the lead male role. Um, and you know he claims ownership over her after he sees that ring around, ring around her neck. Um, we're gonna skip this other clip here because um, it's kind of long and it's not actually a professional performance. It's a high school performance, so I'm just gonna skip that one. Oh, where are we going? All right, so uh, uh, continuing with, uh, with act two, uh, we see we are brought to the Don Juan triumphant premiere, the premiere of the musical that the Phantom has written. Uh, and Raul has set it up so that armed policemen have secured the auditorium. Again, he wants to use this as a way to trap the Phantom. Uh, during her performance, Christine uh, starts to realize that somehow the Phantom has replaced Pianji uh, within the musical. Uh, at some point, he, he replaced him in the role. Uh, he, he, during the musical, he mimics Raul's vow to her uh, that, he, that he made to her that we saw during Act One, and he forces a ring of his own onto her finger. Uh, after he does this, she rips off his mask, which exposes him to the audience, and he, re he retaliates by taking her to his lair. Uh, after he takes her away, uh, we see uh, that Pianji has been hanged as well, which causes, again, a lot of chaos and uh, an angry mob to form within the opera house. They're seeking revenge against, against the Phantom for all he's done. Uh, we go to the Phantom's lair, and there we see Christine. She's wearing a wedding dress. The Phantom has uh, commanded her to do so. And she expresses to him that her fear is not because of the way he looks, but rather his inner nature, the way he acts, uh, the evil things that he's done. Uh, Raul makes his way to the lair, and he begs the phantom to release her, uh, but instead the phantom lassos him as well. And he decides to give Christine an ultimatum. 
He, he tells her that he'll spare Raul's life if she agrees to stay with him. But if she will not agree to stay with him, then he will kill Raul. Uh, so she, she, you know, when he says this to her, she kind of takes it uh, as a moment of reflection. And she asks the Phantom what his life has been. She, she recognizes all the sadness and pain that he must, ex have, must have experienced in order to act this way. And she tells him that he's not alone and she kisses him. Uh, this is the first time that anyone has shown kindness to him before. Again, he's been ostracized his whole life just for the way he looks. Uh, and because, he, because she treats him so kindly, he shows compassion for the first time and he decides to release them both. Uh, so Raul and Christine, they go, to make, they go to make their way out of the lair, uh, but Christine rushes back and she gives him the ring. Uh, that he had given her, and she pledges his love. He pledges his love to her um, once again, and she she exits. She leaves with Raul. Um, after after we see them leave, we see that the mob appears, and they go into the lair trying to find the phantom, but they only find his cloak and his mask. And they lift up the mask into the light, and there's no phantom. He has disappeared into the night. And that is how the musical ends. Uh, so let's show a couple clips here. The first one I'm gonna show you is The Point of No Return. And this is the song that uh, Christine and the Phantom sing during Don Juan Triumphant uh, when she first realizes that he is not Pianji, that he is in fact the Phantom. Thank you. 
that's the point of no return again that's from the 2004 film uh, and then the last clip I'm going to show you now is uh, it's a reprise of uh, sorry the music of the night uh, and this is actually from the 25th anniversary edition but it is Ramin Karimlu, who we mentioned before, singing the role of the Phantom, as well as several other well-known um, actors that have portrayed the Phantom in the past. Uh, they all appeared uh, at this special performance and sang along with him. Uh, it's a relatively short clip, but it gives you a good idea of uh, the different uh, vocal ranges uh, from the different actors that have portrayed the Phantom. So the original London production received Laurence Olivier Awards. Uh, they received an award for Best New Musical and Best Lead Actor. Uh, it also received an Evening Standard Award for Best Musical. An Evening Standard is a newspaper there. It would be like the equivalent of a Drama Desk Award here in the US. The original Broadway production earned a lot of different awards. Uh, first, it received Tony Awards for Best Musical, Best Lead Actor, Best Featured Actress, Best Direction, and Best Scenic, as well as Costume and Lighting Design. Uh, we also had Best, uh, we also had Tony nominations for Best Book, Best Original Score, and Best Choreography. Uh, for Drama Desk Awards, they received awards for Outstanding Actor, Outstanding Director, Outstanding Music, Orchestrations, and again, Set, Costume, and Lighting Design. It also received Drama Desk nominations for Outstanding Musical and Outstanding Actress. Uh, I believe that year the musical, the Outstanding Musical went to uh, Into the Woods. Uh, the, uh, as for Outer Critics Circle Awards, uh, it received a couple of those as well. It won Best Broadway Musical, Best Actor, Best Set, Best Costume, and Best Lighting Design. So uh, a really, I would say the biggest claims that it has is uh, its awards that it's won for design, which is uh, honestly such a big accomplishment really because there are a lot of different, um, there are a lot of very successful artists out there that have designed different shows and to get that many awards for it uh, really speaks to the to the brilliance of Maria Bjornsson especially who's um, was the costume and I believe scenic designer as well. Uh, for acclaims for this musical, it, the original Broadway cast album is actually certified four times platinum in the US. Uh, it sold I believe uh, about five million copies in the US, uh, so it's quite a successful album. Uh, as for reviews, we have a couple different here that I was able to find. Uh, again, this is for these are reviews of the original Broadway production. So the New York Daily News said, it is a spectacular entertainment, visually the most impressive of the British musicals. There are some droll opera parodies, several beautiful songs, an impressive septet, and a grand choral number, all richly orchestrated. Uh, so that's a really good uh, review of the music itself, I'd say. Uh, the, the magazine Variety said a th it was a thrilling and musically rich mass legit entertainment, a 19th century period spectacle with soaring melodies and exceptional singing. Uh, 
that are at the service of an offbeat love story, all of it staged with brilliantly organized flair by Harold Prince. Harold Prince, if you don't know, is one of the best known and most successful Broadway directors to date. Uh, he works, he's worked quite a lot with Sondheim, a couple things with, um, with uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. He's very, very well known, very successful. He's passed away now, uh, but he was one of the best Broadway directors of all time. So it's great that they had such a, such a successful director there uh, putting that all together. Uh, and then we have the New York Times, which says that the musical showers the audience with fantasy and fun at any price. They called it a characteristic Lloyd Webber project that the director Harold Prince, the designer Maria Bjornsson, and the mesmerizing actor Michael Crawford have elevated quite literally to the roof. So not only is that a good compliment to Harold Prince like we saw before, but also credits Maria Bjornsson and the actor Michael Crawford for their work as well. Again, I really, uh, I really love the work of Maria Bjornsson. Uh, she, her, her designs have been used in pretty much all of the different productions around the world, uh, with the exception of uh, less than a handful of productions. For the most part, all the touring productions, the London production, the, the Broadway production, the ones that have been performed all over the world, for the most part, people use her designs because they're just so brilliant and they really express the time period. Uh, the richness of the of the music really is elevated with that those beautiful costumes. Uh, she's just a very gifted artist. Uh, so that is, that is Phantom of the Opera. That is all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed uh, presenting it. I'm not sure yet what my next musical will be. If you have any suggestions, please, please, please let me know. Uh, even if you want to email cc, uh, that's Sperry, dot, Sperry Cecilia at Windsor at Celebration com. You can email her, you can call her, leave her a voicemail. Any suggestions you have, I would greatly appreciate. Uh, but for now, uh, I will leave you with this. So thank you very much for watching and have a good day.